Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America, a trilogy that explains spiritual growth by Jacqueline McNeil Watts gives readers a clear understanding of what human beings are, how we came to be, and the journey of spiritual growth that leads us to our future as spirit beings. It explains how three powerful energies called the Trinity in Christianity are the source and creator of all. On reading this trilogy, one gains an understanding of the ancient wisdom, as explained in the esoteric philosophy and in the mystery schools of pre-biblical times. The misinterpretations and gaps present in many current religious teachings are clarified. Dealing with present-day status of planet Earth and her inhabitants becomes known to the reader. Jacqueline McNeil Watts was employed by the Columbus, Ohio Public Schools for 36 years as a French teacher, peer consultant, and project manager. In 1985, mystical phenomena began to occur in her life as she started seeking answers. This led to 37 years of study at Unity Institute in Missouri, the Columbus Center for Spiritual Living, and the School for Esoteric Studies in Asheville, North Carolina. She has also benefited greatly from the esoteric knowledge and experiences of well-versed mentors who are involved spiritually. Jackie currently resides in her native Charlotte, North Carolina. And Jacqueline McNeil Watts, author of a trilogy that explains spiritual growth, the cure for all of our woes, joins us on This Week in America. Jackie, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's good to be here. This is such an important book that you've written, and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. And we will give you that information as we go through the conversation. Uh, Ms. Jackie, you say that your trilogy clarifies many current religious teachings. What religions have you been affiliated with in some way or another during this lifetime that led you to write this book? I have been affiliated with numerous religions during this lifetime. Firstly, I was raised a Southern Baptist here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I attended a Presbyterian college in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. I also attended a Pentecostal church in Tennessee. For more than 20 years, I was very active as a United Methodist in Ohio, And uh, I lived in a Buddhist country in Southeast Asia for a year. That was Laos. And in Muslim, a Muslim country, Senegal, West Africa. And I had several extended visits in France, which is a Catholic country. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, Uh finish that. It's such a a diverse background in, in various religions. Finish that list. Okay, well, in in later years, when I got on the path to uh, spiritual growth, I have belonged to New Thought churches, Unity, Science of Mind, and also spiritualist churches. And at the present time, I belong to a Unitarian church as well as a center for spiritual living. It's amazing the background and, as I mentioned, the diversity you bring to the book, a trilogy that explains spiritual growth, The Cure for All Our Woes. Our guest is Jacqueline McNeil Watts. We'll give you information on where to get a copy of the book and more on Jacqueline as we go through the conversation today. Jacqueline, is it possible to give us a few examples of the religious teachings that your trilogy clarifies? And I mentioned in the beginning, it does clarify. It brings clarity to some issues that probably many of us have struggled with for years. What are some of the examples of religious teachings that that your trilogy covers? Well, uh, for one, the nature of God. Uh, Most of the traditional religions have you believe in that God is a man in the sky. And he is, is, since we are made in the image of God, God is a human being. But that is not true. God is spirit. He is an energy being. Um, Secondly, to say that you accept Jesus as your Savior does not save you. That's only the first part. Uh, You have to understand what Jesus was teaching and practice his teaching. And uh, the reincarnation piece was removed from the Bible by Catholics a long time ago. And that piece is very important in understanding 
spiritual growth or the evolution of consciousness. And most important of all is the concept of being born again. Being born again is, it is spiritual growth. It is a protracted evolutionary journey that we are on, and it is the raising of one's consciousness by uh, transmuting heavy, dense energies that our, it, our, our form body is made of into lighter ones so that we become spirit beings. You have said so much there. I have so many questions. If you have four or five hours, we could probably go back and, and cover some of the topics that you talked about. Rather than do that, pick up a copy of Jacqueline's book. The book is a trilogy that explains spiritual growth, the cure for all of our woes. Jacqueline McNeil Watts, book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. Information and link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I mentioned in the beginning, in 1985, you began to seek an understanding as to why you were experiencing a, a mystical, a mystical phenomena at the time. What strange occurrences happened to you in 1985? And that was sort of a, a really life-changing year for you, wasn't it? It really was, and it continued beyond 1985, but it, I became aware of it then. My mother was dying and uh, I was at a, a United Methodist Church. I went to the altar call, and I started praying, asking God to please let me know that my mother was going to be all right after she died. And at that point, the crown chakra at the top of my head opened, and energy just started rushing up and down through my body. Before that time, I had no idea that, you know, that my body could is an energy uh, entity, but it started rushing up and down, and I wanted to know why this was happening. And then other things happened, like hearing voices from spirit beings. The first voice that I heard said to me, good morning, Jackie. Just out of the blue, I hear a voice saying, good morning, Jackie. I know now that that was my soul, and my soul was welcoming me to be, to awakening. Um, I have experienced quite a bit of clairvoyance, and that is, I describe that as seeing little movie scenes in my third eye. And most of the scenes that I have seen have been of past events that happened in past incarnation, things that uh, I needed to remember in order to, you know, rectify. Yes. And I have come out of my body and flown around the ceiling of my bedroom and looking down at my body on the bed. So, you know, that proved to me that I'm not uh, this form body, oh, that there's exactly. more to me than that. And I have seen auras around people, and I was visited once by an angel. And most importantly of all, uh, my aunt and my mom came to me years after they died. And uh, they came to me to let me know that they were still alive. They're not dead. They're just, you know, in a different place, on, in a different dimension. The book is a trilogy that explains spiritual growth, the cure for all our woes. Jacqueline McNeil Watts, our guest on the program. Book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the usual places. And a link for uh, Jacqueline's Amazon page when you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. So much there. When you started experiencing the, the phenomena that you were talking about, what was the first thing you did to, to understand? When, once you realized what was happening, where did you go to try to understand and put all of this in, in perspective to get some clarity of some kind? The first thing I did was to go to my uh, traditional religion minister, and I told him what was happening to me, and he could not explain what it was or why it was happening. So then I, was, I started seeking on my own. And... Uh, in order to get to the place of the point of understanding where I am now, I started by meditating um, with a group at a New Age store. 
And from there, I began studying with a spiritualist uh, minister and attending her, her church, her spiritualist church. And then I went from there and joined uh, New Thought. I joined the Unity Church, and I studied their teachings and from Unity to Science of Mind and studied theirs. Now, the New Thought uh, and, new, and spiritualist studies and practices, I believe, were a bridge that moved me from the teachings of traditional religions to awareness of higher knowledge and truths. And in order to understand these higher truths, I enrolled in the School for Esoteric Studies. It's in Asheville. And it's also known, uh, esoteric studies are also known as the ageless wisdom. And uh, when I started studying with them and doing their practices, I really grew in my spiritual growth and in my understanding of spirituality. It sounds like the more you learned, the more you wanted to learn. I... Exactly, because I, be, I began to realize that this stuff is real. You know, I had no yes. idea before I got on this path. How did you that come is, to it, the understanding of spirituality that you, that you have now? How did you how did you get on this path to understanding? Well, just by studying and meditating, and uh, like I said, when one door would close, uh, when I thought I had learned uh, what the spiritualists had to teach, then I went to Unity and learned what they had to teach, and went to Science of Mind, and I ended up. Uh, at the school for esoteric studies. But if, when one door would close, somebody would be there to point me to another one, an open one. Our guest on the program is Jacqueline McNeil Watts. Her book is a trilogy that explains spiritual growth. You'll find the book wherever books are sold, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the usual places. And going to our website, you can link on directly to, to Jacqueline's Amazon page and get information, order the, uh, the book there as well. In your opinion, Jackie, is there anything that all religions have in common? You have studied so many, as we, you mentioned in the beginning. Is there any common factor uh, in all of the religions? Yes, there is. Uh, there are common factors. All religions, firstly, we know that they have the purpose of teaching others to live better lives. And they all have uh, a set of beliefs and practices that are accepted by a number of persons. Uh, the beliefs and practices of a religion were brought forth by a founder, and this founder is a person who was more advanced in spiritual growth or in evolution than average humanity. And I believe that the point in evolution or the level of awareness of the founder accounts for the differences in religious belief. That's why one religion teaches this and another one teaches something different because of where the founder was in evolution, this point in evolution. Interesting. And I, I also believe that all religions have an aspect of truth, but no religion has the whole truth. And I believe this because our awareness of what truth is changes as we evolve. And we become more aware of who we are and what we are becoming. And this, uh, uh, this you can say, accounts for the differences in the tone and in some of the lessons from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Time passes, things change. Is there anything that all people have in common? We talked about all religions. I asked you if, uh, if there was something that they all religions had in common. How about people? Is, are there things that, that we have, all of us, in common? Yes, we do. We are all creations of God or, or source energy, whatever you want to call it. We are all interrelated. We are one big family. I would say one big happy family, but that's debatable right now. <laughs> yes, it is. But, but we are all one, and we are all now on a path of spiritual growth. We are evolving in consciousness, each and every one of us. Some of us are aware of it, and others are not yet aware. Uh, what we're doing, we're raising our lower 3D energy into a higher, lighter, fifth-dimensional frequency. 
And one day, we will all know that we are spirit beings, just like God. We are spirit beings. Why is it important for you to share what you've learned with others, which you do so well in your book, a trilogy that explains spiritual growth? Why was it important for you to write this book and to share your knowledge? Well, they say when you know better, then, you know, you you help others to to learn. And at my stage in evolution, I feel that it's my duty to help others to understand this path of evolution that humanity is on and how we can each help ourselves to advance more quickly on this evolutionary journey. We've been on this journey for a long time, millions of years, but we we had not learned how we could help to advance more quickly. And what my book does and other books on spiritual growth do, they they help us to, to understand this and to evolve more quickly. That's interesting. A number of books have been written over the years on spiritual growth, reading reviews of your book, a trilogy that explains spiritual growth. The book is different and resonates in a different way with the reader. What sets your book apart from so many others? Well, what sets it apart is that it's it's written in a simple, understandable, entertaining manner. Now, many books on spiritual growth is a complex subject. And many of the books that are written, like the Alice Bailey books, an average person would not be able to understand them because they are just hard to, you know, to read and to understand. But I intentionally wrote mine in a simple manner so that the newcomers can understand what's going on. It's written in three parts. The first part is a series of blogs that explain spiritual aspects of various aspects of, of spirituality and by using simple, easy to understand language and examples. And in the second part, Rick, um, Glimpses of a Life is a novella. It explains in an entertaining way reincarnation and how reincarnation helps us to grow spiritually. And the third part, which uh, many people like the most, Spirit Answers, is a conversational dialogue between me, the author, and a spirit being or a spirit guide. And in that part, I ask questions to the spirit guide, and he responds. And this is a delightful conversation. So overall, uh, my book, it, my trilogy, is an easy and fun way to come to an understanding of what we are, why we are here, and what we are becoming. And it's easy to understand why you were so successful as a teacher because you break this down in a way that is so understandable, relatable to uh, to all of us. An excellent job in writing the book. The book is a trilogy that explains spiritual growth. I want to talk about, in the few minutes left in the program, the takeaway from the readers. Do you think that they'll... Uh, think that they'll accept the the teaching that you're presenting to them. For many people, it may be something they're hearing for the first time. What do you hope the takeaway is from uh, for a reader that reads a trilogy that explains spiritual growth? Well, I think that there are some people who are, you have to be open to considering the idea that there is more to us than what we have been taught by traditional religion. Yes. And if you read the book, and you are open to considering these ideas, these people will have a seed of higher knowledge planted in them by reading my trilogy. And many of them will continue to learn by pursuing additional studies of spiritual growth, either now or later. That seed will have been planted in them, that there is more about us to know, and they will pursue it, I believe, sooner or later. And an excellent source, of course, is this book by Jacqueline, a trilogy that explains spiritual growth. Talk about briefly Spirit Answers, which is another book that you've written that's received excellent reviews. Talk about that because that's really another great uh, book that gives us a foundation in spiritual growth, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And and, uh, Rick, the thing is, my trilogy contains uh, Spirit Answers. That's part three. Oh, okay. It's three books okay. in one. 
It contains a book of blogs. It contains glimpses of a life, which was it is a, a little novel, and it contains spirit answers. So you buy the trilogy and you get all three. And you've got uh, answers to so many questions. What has this journey that you've been on? How has this changed your life as you you learn more, as you grow in in spiritual awareness? How has this changed who you are? It has changed my life completely. <laughs> I'm, I no longer fear death. I understand, you know, that piece. We don't, well, I don't want to, you know, get into the really subject matter because I want people to read the book exactly. and learn from yes. there. But I have changed completely from the my upbringing in the Baptist church where I was very active. I've been very active in all of the churches and religions that I have affiliated with. I have been very active. Um, but uh, it's different now. I meditate every each and every day. I do other spiritual practices. I study. I read. <laughs> um, I do full moon meditations with groups and, and so forth. And uh, I try to help others to understand. And I have been successful in helping some others to understand and and others you know who are not ready like i say i've planted seeds in them so that one day they will be ready spiritual growth i I must uh and and i need to tell you that i did not write uh this book or the the three books to become rich and famous i wrote it to help others to understand what's going on in our world and in us at this time. There's a lot that uh, will become clear when one understands uh, spiritual growth. And that's what I I consider my trilogy to be a gift to humanity. It is, and it answers so many questions and lays it out in such a remarkable way. The book is a trilogy that explains spiritual growth. Spiritual growth, are you fully grown spiritually, or is this something that's an ongoing process? It's an ongoing process. No, I'm not fully grown. Jesus, even Jesus wasn't fully grown. We we grow in stages, and uh, that's all explained in Spirit Answers. We go through initiations, and the next step for humanity is to become aware that we are spirit beings. We are going to shed these form bodies that we're in now and become totally energy or spirit beings. That's the next step, but that's not the last step. Eventually, we we will continue to evolve, and eventually we will return to Source. I'm to just, that level of, of spirit. There's so much here, and the time is going by so quickly. So pick up a copy of a trilogy that explains spiritual growth, The Cure for All Our Woes by Jacqueline McNeil Watts. The book is available wherever books are sold. Uh, Jackie, thank you so much for being on the program. Hopefully we can carry on the conversation Excellent job. You're, you're changing lives with this. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thank you, Rick. It has been our pleasure. The book is called A Trilogy That Explains Spiritual Growth, The Cure for All Our Woes. Jacqueline McNeil Watts, the author and our guest, book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all of the usual places. And I thank GrofhousePress.com for arranging our conversation with uh, Jacqueline on today's program. And all this information, by the way, I've given you a lot during the program, you'll find on our website, thisweekinamerica.us, a link there for Amazon and all the information on Jacqueline's book there as well. Our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And you're listening to This Week in America, and we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.